everyone, how are you? I hope you're all doing well. Today I am just experimenting with some very simple shapes and with just two colors. I am using my B paper, which is 100% cotton. It's a six by nine size. And I got myself a new Daniel Smith purple because I wasn't thrilled with the other two purples that I recently purchased. So I went out and got myself another purple and that one is the Carbazole Violet. And it is a beautiful rich purple that I am going to pair with the Quinn Gold here. As usual, I have no plan. I don't know where this is going. I am painting a blob that looks much like a potato right now. So I know that I want to incorporate the two colors, but I'm a little weary that they're gonna muddle up if I mix them together. And y'all know I like using quite a bit of water so I was just a little apprehensive of um, mixing the two together right away. I am adding some of the gold that I have and I have everything listed down below in the description box if you are curious. But I added the gold in in the early stages here because I knew it was going to um, hopefully create a little bit of a barrier between the, the Queen Gold and the purple that is going to come in next. I realized that I have a little bit too much water on my paper, so I am soaking it up with my brush instead of using a paper towel. And right now it doesn't look like a whole lot, but that's okay. If you don't know where you're going, keep going. <laughs> because you just never know. You just never know what's going to come out of you. And that is the beauty of creating these pieces, right? I did use the paper towel for a little bit there because I just had still quite a bit of water on my paper and now I'm just adding a little more condensed Quinn Gold on that edge over here hoping that it will not dilute too much half the time of me creating these backgrounds is dipping and moving the water around on my page. Not only is it very soothing for me to watch, but I just love that process. Especially when you add more colors to it, then you can really see those colors mix and move around and create something interesting. I am getting ready to introduce that purple, but I decided I am not adventurous enough to let the two touch. So I am making space on the bottom right there to um, put that purple right there. I haven't created a background like this in quite a while, so I'm feeling a little bit like a fish out of water. I'm not really sure where this is going to go or where I want it to go. And like I said, um, I don't want to muddy up the two colors. I just wasn't sure how they would mix. And I've been there before, so I'm just taking it a little bit more on the cautious side. I do love that combination of colors because 
they are on the opposite side of the color wheel so they go really well together but yeah it was um i was a little bit a little bit worried and then i thought you know maybe i can combine the two by just kind of make them touch but not touch really like they should be together but not mixing I was worried that the water that I had on the paper was going to um, go all over the place as I was tilting it and so I did um, mop up some of that excess water and it's just a dance between you know how much is too much water how much is too much color do i add more color do i take away some what i can say though is that i do love this purple this is a really pretty purple <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, I made a little bit of a splash right there. And so I am testing it out to see if that purple is going to be okay there. And also it's kind of a little, a little hint of we are together, but we are still apart. So I left it at that. I didn't want to explore it anymore. I did want to spray a little bit of the purple on the opposite side though and you see me covering the the gold up but it wasn't splashing so <laughs> I just had to manually go in and um, put those dots there and of course the moment I take the paper off and um, paint comes off my brush it almost lands into the the yellow and then I added some more gold in the purple and I love that combination of the two because again it gives it a little bit of a hint of that queen gold in the purple without actually using that uh, queen gold so I am not worried about adding the gold to my purple because I've done that before and it works out. I'm still not quite sure what I'm going to do on the left side of the piece, but I'm going to give you my thoughts as I am painting next um, so that you can hear my thought process as I am painting. It has almost dried and I went in and I, off camera, I extended the line and I brought it over here and I might still work a little bit more on that purple area because I want to bring the purple over to this side. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it like that or if I'm going to fill it in like this. I might just, you know, fill that area in with with the purple like that. And I'm not worried about it mudding up the colors too much because this one is now dry. And then I also went ahead and extended the line very, very softly over on the top. And I want to come in and with the yellow and, and make those at least Probably not this one because it's going to get covered up, but this one and maybe I'll add a couple more um, splashes of the, of the Queen Gold. And I might have to do it a little bit more manual than I would like, just because it's already there.
And you know, once we start decorating, I will probably come in and do some more dots or circles um, with some gold. All right, I will come in and make this side a little bit darker now. Um, it's gonna look different because it's dry. So let me see if I can manipulate it to look a little bit more organic. Oh, maybe I can bring in some more gold over on this guy. Right on the on the edge here. Since we have some gold over on this side. Yeah. I was wondering if I should connect this end with this one over here and just kind of bring that line over with the purple or whether I should connect that with the pen. But I think because I have the purple here, I think it would be kind of nice to bring in the purple line and connect the two. I'll try it. What can go wrong? I think it works. Oh, look at me. Look what I did. Look what I did. That's what happens when you're impatient. Now I gotta fix it. All right, you know what? This might be a good learning opportunity. Instead of trying to get rid of it, let's keep it and work with it. I wasn't going to bring it out <laughs> all the way to the to this edge, obviously. And right now it kind of looks out of place a little bit, but I'm not too worried just yet. I might be able to incorporate it once I start decorating it with the doodles. I have to keep reminding myself that these are lessons and that it's just paper. And it's a teaching moment and the learning experience and in the end, it will all come together. I'm gonna let it dry, this part, and then I will be back. I feel like these structures lend themselves well for some exact circles versus, you know, me trying to create circles. So I will use the templates and add some some gold either dots or circles around let's see maybe we'll add 
just some gold circles here and there. Once I was creating the circles and started doodling, I realized I got quiet, so I have to come in with a voiceover again to explain what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, so that was an interesting uh, turn of events, wasn't it? <laughs> I did not plan on, on that. Not that I had a plan to begin with, but you know, once you start putting on these structures you kind of have a vision and and then I messed it all up with my hand um, but like I said it's a teaching moment it's a learning experience and um, in the end I am not mad about it so let's keep going with the doodles like I said I wanted to add some circles but I didn't want to create them wonky because these um the painted elements are already wonky enough so i felt like it needed a little bit of a more um, preciseness in it so i added the circles in gold and i added the circles in black and i like adding these things because it lends for some more areas for me to doodle in. So if you're ever stuck, um, not knowing what else to do, just add some more different elements in because they're really fun places to put your doodles in. My camera had a hard time focusing. I don't know, sometimes that happens and I don't always catch it. So I apologize for some blurry moments throughout. Um, I try to cut them out as much as I can, but sometimes it's just not possible. So I tend to speed it up when that happens or yeah, I tried to cut it out. But anyway, I am gonna let you watch my doodling process in peace here. And then um, I will come back towards the end and kind of tell you what I feel about my creation. And as always, if you have questions or if you have something to add, your thoughts to it, then um, feel free to leave me a comment. I always love hearing from you, even though I am starting to get a lot of comments and I love it, but I have a hard time keeping up with it and I don't always catch you right at the beginning when you comment so um just know that i read them and that they are appreciated okay i will be back towards the end
we're nearing the end of the video now and I'm really curious what your thoughts are. To me, it feels like something I've done in one of my previous sketchbooks. It has different elements than my most recent paintings. And I also think I rescued that oops with the doodles and the different elements that I brought in. And at least I don't think you could tell what happened if you didn't watch the video, right? I also like that I brought in the purple pencil elements. And of course, you know me, I always love to finish it up by adding dots. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. It means the world to me. And remember my upload schedule for next week will be Wednesday instead of Friday because of Thanksgiving. I'll see you then.